Every time I go past Acle Bridge in Norfolk, there's a pub there called the Bridge. It used to be called the Angel. And every time I go past, I think Paul Williams went in there. And he did. He went right into the heart of the countryside to get these tunes. He basically interested in the tunes. And uh, there are lots of places that I go and I think, yep, he went there. And that's what we're going to play to you now. Tunes from Acle. Uh, South Walsham and Rollsby on his 1908 trip to uh, Norfolk. You've all got the titles there, haven't you? Yeah, so I don't need to give you those. So we start off with uh, Liverpool Play, which those of you who know Peter Bellamy's Transports will recognise this. It's one of the Street Singers tunes in there and one of the best tunes ever. We'll start at the top. <laughs>
these are entirely our own arrangements. Um, last November, we had a conference in Stowmarket organised by the East Anglian Traditional Music Trust, and we got together. Alex is the is, is my boss. I'm just a volunteer and, and Shirley as well. Uh, we always do what we're told, don't we? Okay. And um, Alex organised for the various people who'd done research on Paul Williams' activities in the eastern counties, but in this case, almost entirely Norfolk, Suffolk, Essex and Cambridgeshire. And uh, people came and spoke, and I suggested that there was no music during the day, and uh, I was hoisted by my own et arm, and uh, Alex said, right, well, we'll play some. So during the lunch interval, we played some, these, some of these tunes, and it seemed to go down very well, and which is why we're here. Um, a long, long time ago, uh, it seems now, it was about two, 2008, I started researching Paul Williams' activities in Kings Lynn in 1905, a week that changed his musical life, really. Not, not the only songs that really hit him, but he absolutely loved some of those. And he used them again and again, notably uh, a song called The Captain's Apprentice, uh, and that's the first tune in the Norfolk Rhapsody number no. one, if you know that one. And um, I uh, r realised there were no slow airs in Norfolk. They're all songs or dance tunes. So I put a couple of the song tunes together uh, a long while ago now, it seems, and uh, I've been playing them ever since. And uh, I'll play them to you now. You've got the titles there. These are two songs from Kings Lynn in 1905. One by an old boy in the... Um, in the workhouse, and one by uh, Mr. Donga, the sale maker, whose premises were in the Tuesday marketplace in Kings Lynn. <laughs> shortened when you look down at the keys. I can't actually see where my fingers are at all. Just pick guesswork. <laughs>
Um, the next three uh, all come from Suffolk, uh, from Southwold and Hadley. Um, I don't know much about Suffolk, being a Norfolkman myself, but I've had to learn them. And uh, they're, they're just as good as the Norfolk ones, I'm sure you'd be pleased to you know. Um, so this is the um, Isle of France. Barbary Allen is one of the most uh, widespread uh, folk songs in the world. Plenty of versions in the New World, as well as around here. Uh, it's a great tune. And then we uh, bounce into uh, Green Lanes as well. Who's going to sing a couple of songs? Uh, one now and one in a, a minute's time. Shirley, thank you. As Alan mentioned, I'm also a volunteer uh, for the East Anglian Traditional Music Trust. Um, and most often, um, Alex, who holds it all together um, in more ways than one, I'm usually her MC because she absolutely refuses to speak in public. 
<laughs> but uh, if you want to know anything at all about the trust, then, then go to Alex. Um, and uh, I'm also used to singing uh, in hot, sweaty, crowdy pub sessions, not a cold church, but what a treat. Um, uh, and I haven't had a chance to try my voice out, so I was sneezing as I came up, but uh, hopefully it will be okay. Uh, and I've cheated slightly because on your programme it says everything, the tunes were collected uh, in Suffolk and Norfolk. Um, and uh, this is, uh, the tunes were, but I've actually taken a song, uh, a couple of songs that I'm doing. Um, they were collected everywhere and this one, the blacksmith, was collected in uh, near Webley in Herefordshire. Um, but it was also recorded by him... Um, uh, and Mr. Carter of King's Lynn uh, sang it to him as well. So all of these songs and all of these tunes uh, are from all over the place, basically. A tale of woe, if you don't know it already, really. A blacksmith courted me nine months and better. He fairly won my heart wrote me a letter with his hammer in his hand he looked so clever and if I was with my love I'd live forever and where is my love gone with his cheeks so rosy and his good black billy cock on decked with primroses. I'm afraid the scorching sun will shine and burn his beauty. And if I was with my love, I'd do my duty. Strange news has come to town Strange news is carried Strange news flies up and down That my love is married While well, I wish them both much joy Though they don't hear me And may God reward him well for the slighting of me what did you promise me when you lay beside me you said you'd marry me and not deny me if i said i'd marry you it was only for to try you so bring your witness love and i'll not deny you oh witness have i none save god almighty and he'll reward you well for the slighting of me her lips grew pale and warm it made her poor heart tremble to think that she loved one and he proved deceitful Um, just before we sort of walk from there to here, Alex challenged me to link Ray Fawn Williams with Bungie. And I like a challenge, and she's my boss, so I always do what I'm told. And this is the link. It's a bit tenuous, but it is genuine. Um, the person who took Fawn Williams into the fishing community in Kings Lynn in 1905 was the curate of the church, St Nicholas. And he knew the fishing community well, and he took Ron Williams to see Dougie Carter, who uh, Shirley just mentioned. And uh, he was a very unusual priest. He was a working class. 
His father was a leather worker and he managed to get a grant to study at uh, university and so on. But he was always going to have a problem because he had nobody to sort of push his case with the bishop and so on. But eventually, cut a long story short, in about 1908, um, he got the living of Ilkertschul St. Margaret. Some of you will know this, I'm sure. Um, and that was his first full-time job with his own parish. Uh, in 1914, when the war broke out, the East Suffolk Militia established a permanent camp at Bordsea, and the local priests took it in turns to be padre. And it just so happens that Alfred Huddle was in his tent, in, I'm not sure what year it was, when there was a gale and all the tents blew down. And Alfred Huddle was famous uh, for a few minutes because he lost not only his uh, cassock and his prayer book but his bottle of scotch went as well and one of the people who wrote a poem about it and this published was a chap called Frederick Rolfe now I'm sure some of you know him he was a professional poacher uh, convicted and a pretty nasty bit of work by all accounts but he got so old and his dog died that he couldn't continue as a poacher any longer. So he was looking for a soft option. And he joined up uh, in the, during the First World War, and he was given the post of regimental rat catcher at Bordsea, which was a pretty good, easy job for him. And there's a lovely photograph of him uh, with his implements, and everybody else has got a rifle. Oh, uh, not him, no. <laughs> so he lived in Bungie. That was the story. He died here as well. So there is a connection, a bit tenuous, <laughs> but then I like telling stories, um, between Kingsley, Bungie, Rayford, Williams, uh, Bungie and so on. So we're now going to do some more um, songs from uh, Norfolk, uh, Mr Locke, Mr Hilton, and a chap called Pete, who occasionally, Paul Williams didn't write somebody's name down. Um, there's one in Kingsley called Elizabeth, we don't know who she was. But the, and I don't know who Peter is, I've spent ages trying to find out, somebody called Peter in um, uh, Hickling, but I couldn't. So we'll play the tunes anyway, whether we know what they are or not.
asked me to tell you was the, the title of the next one is Ashwick and Farewell. Those of you who are fans of uh, folk music in general or classic FM in particular, they seem to play this one all the time. <coughs> uh, it's written by a chap called Jay Ungar, who uh, used to go to a summer camp in Upper State, New York, every summer. And uh, he was so sad at leaving one year, he wrote this tune, which has become a big hit worldwide. And uh, I thought, again, you know, we've got new slow airs in Norfolk. Uh, I'll see what I can do. And I came up with a couple of tunes, uh, which Alex is now going to play. And um, I was after a title, I must admit, a bit cheeky, uh, like Ash Open Farewell. And I used to go to Kingsley when I was researching Paul Williams' activities there and stay in my little camper van. And then I'd come back to Norwich at the end of uh, two or three days. But I'd always take the quiet way home, never the A47. And I took the, what's known as the Trans Norfolk Highway, or the B1145. And coming out of Kingsley, it's the most gorgeous route. You go through the industrial estate, you go past the crematorium, past the entrance of the sand quarry, and then you come to Ash Wicken. And once you get to Ash Wicken, and through there, you're in glorious West Norfolk. All sky, all fields, and just beautiful. 30 miles an hour average between Kingsley and the Norwich, and I was very, very happy. So we've transferred ourselves from Upper State, New York, to West Norfolk, and we're not going to New York itself, we're going to Norwich, but uh, this is Ash Wicken Farewell, with Alex on solo violin.
two tunes, Irish Girl and Polly Oliver. Uh, don't want to say anything about them, they're just cracking tunes. Um, he was looking for the soul of English music, that's what he said, and he found it in three places. One of them was Kings Lynn, and uh, these, this is the sort of song that would have really raised the roof on a Saturday night in many pubs in East Anglia, um, possibly the Tilden Smith in King's Lynn, although we don't know that he actually went there. Um, so, a couple of really good tunes. Um, Mr. Gorbel was in the workhouse, and Polly Oliver, in his 1908 trip, he went to the Broads, and in about a week he met three people called Walter Devage. And that made my life very difficult when I was trying to find out who's saying what. It turned out that it was easy to remember. The one called Skipper was a farmer. <laughs> and the other one was never called Walter Debbie. He was always called Barlow. Uh, because he once wore a top hat with the maker's name showing. And the maker's name was Barlow. And nobody ever called him Walter after that. So uh, my life was made very difficult by some of these things. But it's a couple of good tunes anyway. books up here uh, and uh, I was involved with the project that the East Anglian Traditional Music Trust uh, did some years ago. When would it be? 2008. 2008, goodness me. Um, uh, at Blythe Voices, which was a, a publication, uh, was the result of the project 
and these are the uh, songs and tunes that Rayfall Williams collected actually in Southwold and nearby. Um, and I was involved with this. We did have a concert and, and I was going to choose one of the ones that I sang then called Lovely Joan. Um, but I did that as a duet with Chris Coe uh, and it was a long time ago and I haven't had time to learn it. So as we are approaching Easter, I thought I'd go in a different direction and sing another one uh, largely collected, collected several times in Herefordshire, but it's such a popular song, um, The Leaves of Life, or otherwise known as Seven Virgins, um, and Easter is approaching, so it seemed an appropriate one to do. All under the leaves and the leaves of life I met with virgins seven, and one of them was Mary Mild, our Lord's blessed mother in heaven. And what are you seeking, you seven pretty maids, all under the leaves of life? Oh, we're not seeking for leaves, Thomas, but for a friend of thine. Go down, go down into yonder town and sit in the gallery and there you'll see sweet Jesus Christ. Nailed to a big yew tree. And so it's down and down to yonder town, as fast as the foot will fall. And it's many's the bitter and grievous tear from the virgin's eyes did fall. Oh, peace, oh, peace, oh, peace, mother, your weeping does me grieve, for I would suffer this, he said, for Adam and for Eve. Oh, how can I my weeping leave, my sorrow? Then he's laid his head on his right shoulder and death has struck him nigh. May the Lord have mercy on his poor soul. Sweet mother, now I die. Oh, the rose, the rose, oh, the gentle rose. The fennel that grows so green, God give us grace in every place to pray for our King and Queen. And furthermore, to our enemies all, our prayers they should be strong. <laughs> Amen, good Lord, your charity is the ending of my song. In 1904, uh, Ray Fawn Williams undertook his first full year of uh, noting folk songs. The first one was uh, December 1903, Bushes and Briars. And uh, as if that wasn't enough, he also was appointed to the committee of the Folk Song Society, 
which had more or less uh, died in the last year or so, revived by him and Cecil Sharp, Lucy Broadwood, etc. And as if that wasn't enough, his friend Percy Diemer was uh, producing a new hymn book and he asked Rafe to be the musical director. That was, of course, the English hymnal. And so he started uh, work on that all in the same year. And he, if you get a chance to read the introduction, the musical introduction to that book, please do, because it's, it's marvellous. shows you exactly what he was trying to do. And in there, there are about 600-odd um, tunes, I think, um, 49 of them are traditional of one sort or another, and something like, I can't remember exactly, 35 to 40 are English traditional tunes. So he really did uh, practice what he preached. And, uh, he, and he stuck with it because 20 years later, he was musical director of the first Songs of Praise. And, he, and again, there are 40 odd traditional tunes in there. He took one of the tunes from Kings Lynn and he put it, uh, he harmonized it, put it in the English hymnal, found words from uh, G.K. Chesterton, O oh God of Earth and Altar. Some of you, I'm sure, would know it. But he did throughout his life, he never ever, in hymn books, gave the original title of the folk song, for fairly obvious reasons. Uh, for instance, O oh God of Earth and Altar is a song about a young lad who's caught poaching and sent to Australia. And I guess that the um, average congregation, if they knew that a song they were singing in praise of something or other was actually about some poor girl who got seduced by a sailor and so on. Well, that, that wouldn't actually help their worship. So he kept quiet about where they came from. Um, I think I was always been surprised he didn't do more of the tunes from King's Lynn in the songbook, but he probably didn't have time. And so there is only that one. I've had a bash at some of them, and it's quite interesting to try and do it. And uh, I've always wanted to play the church organ. I never have learned, but I'm going to have a good go on this uh, in this next set, our last set uh, of doing that with the piano accordion. So you have to imagine that I've got a pedal board and umpteen stops instead of just the five, and three keyboards instead of one, and so on and so forth. Um, we're going to do this set. The hymn comes twice, uh, once at the beginning, once halfway-ish. And we're going to finish with uh, a song called Eccleston Hall, or if you come from Suffolk, I think it's Ingotston Hall in Suffolk, I'm not really sure. So here we go with, broad, oh yeah, this, this hymn is called Broad Striped Trousers. <laughs>